Today I'd like to share with you three habits of highly sensitive people and empaths. Stay tuned. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather Evans. I'm a self-care and empowerment coach working with empaths and highly sensitive people around the world. If you're ready to see your sensitivity as your greatest asset, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to my channel and click on that bell to get notified when I release new videos each week. I work with empaths and highly sensitive people from all walks of life. And I will tell you, there are three habits that have stood out to me that most of my clients have in common. And I wanted to share them with you in case you identify with any of them. Let's get started. The first habit that I see most often with my clients is putting others before themselves. A lot of my clients will put somebody else's needs ahead of their own. In fact, they will sometimes even take their need, want, or desire and set it aside to help realize somebody else's dream or vision for their life. Now, that's incredibly generous and that's such a gift to the person who's receiving it. However, it's also not honoring what your truth is. It's also not honoring what you really want in your own life. And so I want you to notice if you have a tendency to put somebody else's vision ahead of your own, to put somebody else's needs ahead of your own, to pull back from actually expressing how you feel or saying what it is you want in your life. These are all signs that you're putting other people before yourself. And this is a habit that I encourage my clients to begin to look at. What's the motivation behind it? How is it serving them? And then what can we do to start shifting that behavior? What can we do to start shifting that pattern so that they become the most important person on their life and the vision that they have for their life gets to the top of the list? The second thing that a lot of my clients have in common, and it's a habit that I've seen, is their desire or their need for time alone to recharge. That for a lot of my clients, the only way they feel they can recharge their batteries or feel rejuvenated and really well rested is if they've had adequate time to spend on their own. And they spend this time in a variety of ways, reading books, gardening, taking walks, maybe even just pulling up something on Netflix and sitting on the couch. All of my clients have different strategies that they use, but one thing is very clear. They all need alone time in order to feel refreshed. I'd love to know what you do when you spend time alone to recharge your batteries. Leave a comment below. The third habit I've seen emerge in the people that I work with is this giving of power away to others. Now, this can sometimes coincide with the first one, but it is different. When we give our power away to somebody else, we're actually inviting that person, typically without saying it, to make decisions about which direction our life is going to go in. We allow somebody else to tell us how we're feeling, how we should be feeling, how we should be reacting, what the best choice is for us, what direction we should take with our career, relationships, our lives. And this is a habit that I encourage us to look at lovingly and with respect. For a lot of us, myself included in my own journey, having other people make decisions for us was a safe way to navigate. It meant that we were getting validation. It meant that we didn't have to confront some of the harder decisions in life. And it was easy, especially as an empath in my case, to fall in line with what others felt I should be feeling. That if I was having my own reaction, that that actually wasn't valid. And that by allowing others to, in essence, dictate how I should be feeling, I was giving my power away to them. I was saying, yep, you're right. You know how I should be feeling. Therefore, I shall feel that way. That was not me living my truth, and that's not my clients or you living your truth. We have to respect and honor what our systems are telling us, and it takes practice. It takes practice getting familiar and being able to discern what is my truth and how am I going to say it out loud, and do I need to say it out loud, or can I just live it through my actions? 
when we begin to practice that, when we begin to practice taking our power back, stepping into our voice, and by the way, one of the ways we do this is through self-care. When we do that, all of a sudden, it's not as easy for people to either take power from us or for us to give permission for people to take power away. There is an exchange that happens there. If we're giving our power away, it can end up being a habit or a pattern that gets repeated over and over and over because just as much as it becomes familiar to your system, it becomes familiar to other people as well. And they might expect you to do it all the time. So as we begin to dismantle this habit, as we begin to take our power back, we move forward with sensitivity. We move forward with respect for how the system is feeling and we start slowly. I'd love to know if any of these habits resonated with you. Do you see yourself doing any of these things in your own life? If you did, maybe you feel safe enough to share with us in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. I've created a free 10 minute meditation for you to feel into your power, for you to actually sit in the essence of what it means to honor your truth. You can access that meditation by using the link in the description below. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, remember to like it, subscribe to my channel, and click on that bell to get notified when I release new videos each week. Stay ignited out there. I will see you soon. Bye.